Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the Librium MS Docker container. We're gonna go through the entire process, starting with a freshly installed Ubuntu 24.04 server, to installing the Docker engine, using Docker Compose, and finally logging into the web interface so we can start using Librium MS. So let's get started. First, we are gonna get the Docker engine installed on our server. So I usually try and install the software using the actual vendor's repository. We can find this out by going over to the Docker's doc website. I've navigated to the Ubuntu install section of the Docker engine. The primary information we are looking for here is how to add the repository to our Ubuntu server and what to install. All this information is right here, so we can simply copy and paste this into our server. Before I do that, I'm gonna go root permanently for this by doing sudo -i. And now let's copy the commands to install Docker. Okay, now that it's installed, we can do a docker-v to see our Docker version and confirm that the Docker command is actually working. Okay, this looks good. Docker is installed and ready to go. So we have a few containers that make up the Librium MS solution, and there's even more you can run to add additional functionality, but this is the bare minimum you need. This MariaDB container is our database that contains all our devices and configuration for Librian MS. We have a separate container for the Librian MS software, and this contains the web GUI and all the code to make it work. We have a dispatcher service container. This will do all our polling, discovering, billing, alerting on devices and ports, all the stuff you need to run at set intervals. And finally, we have the Redis server container. This is an in-memory database meant for storage of temporary data. In the context of Librium MS, we are using this as a queuing and locking system for our devices. Now, as you can imagine, all these containers have settings we need to configure. So typically, software vendors who provide a Docker image will most of the time include an example Docker Compose file. If we head over to the GitHub repo for the Librium MS Docker container, we can find examples of this Docker Compose file. There are two primary ways of running containers. One is via a docker run command, and one is via docker compose. These are interchangeable, so if you see a docker run command, you can convert this to a docker compose file and vice versa. So this example docker compose file has all the containers and configuration options we need to run Librium MS. We will want to copy the contents of this file over to our server and modify it as needed. I'm going to create a new folder called LibriumMS-Docker. Inside this folder will contain the Docker Compose file, along with .env files for environment variables, and persistent data. I'll start by typing nano space docker-compose.yml to create a new Docker Compose file. So this Docker Compose example is showing us a lot of different containers, but we don't need all of them to make LibriumMS work. I'm only going to copy the couple I talked about earlier, MariaDB, the Librium MS software, the dispatcher, and Redis. If we examine our Docker Compose file, we see some values in here with a dollar sign and curly brackets. These are environment variables, meaning that when we run this Docker Compose file, Docker will replace these values with values inside your environment. Typically what you do is you create a .env file alongside this Docker Compose file. When we run the Docker Compose file, the values will be loaded from the .env file automatically and be replaced in the config. We can see on the GitHub repo they have provided an example .env file. Additionally, the LibriumMS container references a LibriumMS.env file. This is simply loading additional environment variables just from another file. It's doing the exact same thing as the .env file. So we want to create both these .env files on our server. And we can edit these files as needed, the most important being the database password. This is the password that LibriumMS will use to access the database. I'll make mine more secure by adding a 1 to the end. We should also set our time zone correctly. This PUID and GUID is the user and group ID that will be used when creating files on the host hard disk, so outside of the container. So now we should have three files on our server, but before we run this Docker Compose, I want to mention volumes. Docker containers are immutable, meaning any changes I make in a container at runtime are lost when I restart it. Now that's good for playing around with a system as I can't really break it, we just restart it and we're back to normal. But a database is meant for saving data in the long term. 
we don't want restarts affecting this data. And to do that, we need to mount a Docker volume. A Docker volume simply links a folder inside your container to a folder on the host hard disk. If we look at our MariaDB container under volumes, we see the following line. This is mapping a DB folder inside the current directory as the Docker compose file to var lib mysql inside the container. This var lib mysql is the location where MariaDB saves its database. So now when we restart our MariaDB container, our database will be read from outside the container in this DB folder. We also have another volume mapping for Librium MS. So you can expect when we run this Docker Compose file, we will see two new directories in here in addition to our three files. We do need to make one change in our Docker Compose file. In the Librium MS container, we are dependent on the msmtpd container we didn't copy. This container is for sending email. We need to remove this line because we didn't copy that container over from the example docker compose. Okay, we're finally ready to start this. We need to make sure that we're in our folder that contains our docker compose file. We will run the command sudo docker compose up. Now this is going to launch docker compose in the current interactive shell. I like doing this for the first time because we can see the containers being pulled from docker hub, starting up, and maybe any errors that might occur. If we do get an error, we can just stop the containers and fix the errors right there without trying to look through logs. We can see here that the database is being set up and seeded with schema files that Librian MS needs. It doesn't look like we're having any major errors, and the last message we get is ready to handle connections from the Librian MS container. So let's try and access the web GUI. If we look at our Docker Compose file for the Librian MS container, we see that we are exposing port 8000. This is mapping port 8000 from inside the container to port 8000 outside of the container on our host system. It's also mentioned in the docs that this is the port for the Nginx web server that Librium MS is using. If we check the IP address of our host system, we have everything we need to type in the URL. Okay, this is perfect. The first time we connect, we will be asked to set up an admin username and password. We will always select dark mode, click Finish install, and this looks good. We can click on the dashboard button and log into Librium MS. Congratulations, you've successfully deployed Librium MS in a Docker container. Now we still have one more thing to take care of. If we switch back to our shell, we have Docker Compose running interactively. So when I want to close the shell, it's going to kill Docker Compose. We really want to run this as a daemon, so it runs in the background. To do that, we'll kill the Docker Compose session with Control C. That will shut it down gracefully. We can then run this same exact command, sudo docker compose up, but this time we're going to add a dash d at the end. This will run it in the background as a daemon. We can see if the docker containers are actually running by using the command sudo docker ps. And if we look at our Librium MS docker directory now, we see we have two new folders created. These are the docker volumes we mapped earlier. If you want to create a backup of all this, you just simply back up this entire Librian MS Docker directory. So that's all I have for this video. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.